Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, great to have you on the Digital Transaction Banking webinar. Uh, my name is Chetan Parekh. I'm the partner with CEDA Consulting. I had the financial technology practice and have been advising clients and banks for a little over 20 years. Uh, we have an esteemed panel today. Uh, we have Sakib Khan, who is a regional head for the back base, which is one of the innovators in digital. And he will be taking us through what Backbase has to offer on transaction and commercial banking, as well as giving his insights on customer experience. And we have Raja Maya from Infosys, uh, who very much started uh, digital industry uh, with Finical e-banking, and then of course grown it to have liquidity and many, many advanced modules. So it's kind of an esteemed set of speaker. Welcome, warm welcome to everyone. So I'll take you uh, through a quick evolution and market overview of transaction banking as it stands in 2021 post COVID situation and some key innovation ideas. So right from 1990s and 2000, where it was supposed to be more core banking and an application of internet banking, it has moved to universal banking over the last 20 years and multiple modules of mobile and multi-channel banking. And what we've seen in last 10 years is further focused distribution between retail, SME and corporate. Plus with FinTech and outsourcing getting priorities, there is a significant level of activities in the region and COVID has further triggered this off with next generation of opportunities. So let me first start with defining transaction bank. So traditionally it used to be payments, collections, liquidity and a basic trade finance. Now with digitization over the last five to seven years, of course the big four banks started their portals and transaction banking. City was a pioneer. The payments and collections still remains the same, but with a lot of innovations around ERP integrations, B2B payments, collections using newer concepts of virtual accounts and liquidity going regional rather than just the global. The digital trade finance has taken a lot of leap and we'll be discussing one of the innovation ideas later today along with the supply chain finance, which is a completely parallel line of business, funding small and medium suppliers from a reputed bias. And last but not the least is a treasury where cash flow forecasting and financial risk management still formulates part of the opportunities. When you look at the global market, it's almost a two trillion market where a significant amount of market share is focused on to cash management and the share of revenues are likely to change with almost 40% of business coming from Americas. Asia pack going to contribute the second big 35% followed by Europe and then Middle East. Middle East carries somewhere in the range of seven to 8% of global transaction banking. And the growth wise again, uh, it's growing at 8% with quite a sensible and reasonable growth rate in today's market where most of the other industries are degrowing. Now, if you look at very interesting COVID numbers last year, COVID of course took revenues down for most of the banks. And while interest rate collapsed and interest revenues went down, the cash management and trade also got impacted because of balances and interest income on balances, trade finance incomes, and it's likely to recover in 2021. The left-hand side chart is showing you how the market is moving for the top 10 banks globally. And the right-hand side is giving you a perspective based on the region where Asia and Americas are likely to be the future growth engine with Europe remaining more or less stagnant with a 10% kind of a growth. So it's going to be a recovery story in 2021 when it comes to transaction banking. 
coming closer to gcc uh, again each market is unique but bahrain has taken a lead with respect to digitization and lot of transaction banking and payment related stories there with blockchain being available as well as well as the cloud of aws and azure being approved by bahrain central bank kuwait is going through some early changes from a normal banking system then e banking systems to an omni channel systems with a lot of self service investments so a lot of customer service centers are coming in for smes and corporates oman is going through a lot of digitization and investing in digital hubs cost savings and platforms with bank muscat bank dofar and multiple other banks investing into the platforms qatar has a vision and thanks to it coming back into the gcc uh with embargo being lifted it's likely to see a lot of growth and a lot of transactions and deals in this year saudi arabia is far, by far the largest market and samba recently announced the deal and its merger with ncb but prior to the merger they bought a transaction banking system and they're likely to go ahead investing in it a uh, couple of other banks bank al jazeera as well as bank saudi france is likely to announce the deals as well in 2021 and uae of course is where all of it started with most of the banks investing over the last 6 to 8 years with mushrak metric starting with uh, 2012 investments and then in 2020 they've made a next set of five platform investments enbd going live with a smart trade and smart business platforms as a business online really creates a field where there is immense opportunities within gcc moving further to the opportunities up so from customer perspective there are three drivers the first is a cell phone body especially for single proprietor smes and they are looking for a frictionless onboarding because through 2020 sme has really suffered because of cash losses not able to have investments and multiple business challenges so in 2021 they are looking for a lot of new businesses to come in like any uh, pandemic will result into innovations and a lot of fintechs are coming in in adgm which is uh, abu dhabi global markets giving digital banking licenses for multiple sme banks and lending companies so there are multiple of these which is getting launched this year along with the necessary embedding the banking as part of the digitization and third but a very important perspective from customer experience is smes are now looking for single proprietor based workflows and working capital financing platform based financing um uh, invoice reconciliation use cases for a medium to large corporates and a small but smart platform which can allow you to do your vat submissions your accounting to a in build erp and multiple other such use cases so that's what customers are asking when you're looking at a tech drivers from banking perspective and fintech perspective the whole focus is to improve efficiency because everybody knows corporate onboarding takes a lot of time scaling the architecture across markets because covid has suddenly showed to everyone that there is no real physical uh, limitations when it comes to customer servicing and third both uae and bahrain has announced open banking kuwait is also likely to announce open banking this year so regulatory landscape is asking you to open up your apis so that's some of the key drivers from the tech perspective when you look at the globally uh, the trends on the deals of the systems our uh, us is really growing fast with 41 deals uh 63 deals of uh europe and india is at 39 deals and asia as a lower growth but mainly europe and us led investment is what we are seeing in 19 and 20 now when you look at in gcc investments uh last year we show are close to 14 deals and 2020 outputs are about to come out but approximately estimated to be 20 deals so 
COVID has really pushed the envelope for digital projects to get green signals, right? And especially if you see uh, Saudi Arabia is leading the show, followed by UAE and Bahrain, and both Oman and Kuwait also are making investment in digital. So which is, if you look at the banks who invested within 2020 and 2019, last 24 months, Samba made a large announcement, NBB, Gulf Bank of Kuwait went with another platform and multiple other banks who've made the investment, including a very interesting investment by Anglo Gulf Trade Bank, who invested in seven platforms for commercial banking, pure play commercial banking, seven backend and front-end systems, right? So very, very large investment. Al-Raji made an investment. Emirates Development Bank made a very small but interesting supply chain investment uh, with one of the fintechs. So very, very interesting set of investments we've seen in last 24 months. Now coming to the innovations, there are five key innovations which we see as Cedar IBSI. The one of the first one is on open banking. The B2B API is going to be replacing H2H investments done in the region because H2H are proprietary in large investments with SAP, Oracle kind of players. Uh, they're not nimble, they're not flexible. Uh, so open B2B banking APIs are going to come in with open banking coming in. Second on the smart onboarding solution, again, most banks will invest into their onboarding investments. Third, pure play digital banks, thanks to new licensing across markets. Fourth, trade finance is going to see a lot of interesting digitization and smart contracts using blockchain and the ledger technology. And last but not the least, is cloud-based supply chain pl platforms being invested by most of the banks so that they can have a new line of business going with 10 to 15% revenues coming from there. Now let's look at the B2B APIs. So there are multiple models available for B2B APIs. Uh, you can have a best of breed fintechs coming in together or a native portal with an API gateway, or you can invest into your traditional core banking being extended with an API gateway. When you look at smart onboarding. Again, your transaction banking platform can do it, or you can go with one of the smart onboarding platforms. Uh, Emirates NBD and Emirates Islamic Bank went with a very interesting smart onboarding platform, which is a case study out in the market as well. Now, when you say smart onboarding, we are basically saying the request is digitized, company validation with Department of Economic Affairs is digitized, bank verification is digitized, and a welcome kit is sent through an email, right? So, so that's the digitization an SME is looking for. Of course, UAE itself has 47 odd authorities to give license. And hence, license always is going to be difficult to validate, but most of the zones are coming on giving their B2B APIs. Moving on to SME banking. Again, there are a lot of global use cases and Maya will speak about the Goldman Sachs later in the day. Metal is again another use case where digital banks for SME is very much a reality in this part of the world. In UAE itself, there are two banks which is likely to launch their own digital SME bank. And across GCC, close to 10 banks are launching their digital SME banks in 2021. And again, all of these have tasks, instant invoicing, easy expenses for the corporates, and a full set of services delivery. So it very much gives a mobile app to an SME owner where they can use this for their daily business. Digitizing the trade finance, couple of banks, banks have announced a huge investments. Again, ADCB is making an investment. Adib will making an investment in digital trades. Uh, they've innovated on a FinTech prop, uh, propositions, which will help them validate using smart contracts and digital ledgers. Again, a fifth idea, very interesting one, is a cloud-based SCF. We saw an investment from two players in UAE this year in 2020. Emirates NBD went with uh, Proxima, a Europe-based player, a Neurosoft, and Emirates Development Bank went with Emirates Development, another similar player for the local investment. Again, these supply chain financing use cases are based on three major principles. One is around financing the supplier, Second is around financing the buyer and third is around new business models, which is what 
Maya will speak more about in later called platform models. So moving further, I will invite uh, Sakib from Backbase to take us through Backbase's view on how they see the commercial banking market. Over to you, Sakib. Thank you indeed, uh, Chiefin. And hello, everybody. It is indeed a pleasure to be a part of this very exciting webinar today. My name is uh, Sakib Khan. I manage a business for Backbase in the Middle East. And uh, we are definitely seeing uh, a lot of innovation and banks really opening up in the space of commercial and transaction banking. So from my perspective, I think today uh, the topic should be the battle for the preferred app. And I think that's where, uh, you know, that's where uh, the bait is going. Uh, and as Backface, we have more of an angle from a human uh, psychological perspective. We believe that technology is an enabler, but at the end of the day, the impact that it has to create should benefit our daily lives, whether we as retailers or whether we as employees working for a corporate bank or a, you know, for a commercial organization. So moving on uh, in today's era, I think, uh, Chutan, you can move on. It is, it, it is the era where we're living in a platform era, right? And platforms are literally taking in today's businesses. One of the example for well, one of the example is, for example, Uber Eats. If you look at Uber Eats, and I'm sure everybody who's in today's call would have had have some sort of an interaction with either Uber Eats or with an app like Uber Eats, right? And the experience you get uh, while you're ordering for some food is 10 times fast and easy. And what it's doing is it, it is one engagement layer that it's instantly integrating your demand and supply with instant gratification. This is more in the context of B2C, but let's have a look in the B2B context, which is another great example called Shopify. Shopify personally is one of my favorites, right? So they have literally disrupted the e-commerce industry. It is one engagement platform where small retailers uh, can spin up their entire e-commerce website within minutes from a nice uh, looking website, either on the web or onto the, uh, on their mobile, to an instant uh, receivables engine, to an instant payment collection. This is all done because of the fact that there is an instant e-commerce power which is available through an e-commerce platform. Now, if you look at it, this is something which is happening outside the banking space. And we believe uh, that the future for banking is also pretty much the same. So let's have the other slide here. This is where the future of banking is all about, which is an engagement platform. The word engagement is quite, uh, let's say, uh, you know, an interesting in itself because the engagement aspect is not only related to your end customer's experience here, it is only very much relevant to your bank's employees, right? What we've seen is in today's a lot of the traditional banks and Chetan was mentioning about the different models and the different deals. He talked about Anglo Gulf Trade Bank in Abu Dhabi, which is they've gone uh, with seven different backend systems is all about partnerships. So the so the engagement is not primarily with your end customers. It is also with your underlying systems. And these underlying systems could be your system of ledgers, could be your core banking systems, could be, your, uh, could be integrating with other banks uh, in the context of open banking and open APIs, or also it could be with FinTech partners. But one thing which is the most important in the future of banking is that you as a bank have to own that engagement layer. And that's where you will make the profound difference. And that's where you can really kill your competition. So I was talking about engagement platform and I think there is, this is something which is happening, right? So let's, take, let's pick up FinTech partners, for example. In the context of FinTech partners, if you move ahead, you would see that there is a very evident shift on the rise, right? We see these really interesting fintech companies which are giving a relatively tough time to banks now. For example, the payment space, right? You find companies like Plaid, an aggregator, you companies like Iden or Stripe, 
they are serving a good problem for the SMEs, which is an instant payment facilitation engine. Similarly, in the context of accounting software, you see that, uh, you know, in, a, in an actual life of an SME, he needs to have an accounting system to run his business. And of course, in the lending space, we also see these very specialized fintech companies like Soft, uh, Coconut and Amazon. They're giving a lot of really niche services to the SMEs. So the commercial digital requirements are, are increasing in a very rapid manner, right? And this is what a platform can really help you. What the platform can do for you as your bank is something what we call it as the network effects. So if you move forward, you see in that today's economies of, uh, let's say, platform, how do you achieve a very rapid and instant growth, right? So what we've seen is that banks are moving more from a pipeline, sort of a traditional old way of working to more of a ecosystem way. And the new challenger banks that are being developed in nowadays are essentially on the same lines of uh, an operating model. They've taken a platform business in the middle and they've partnered with the, with the fintechs. Some of the key stats now, right? And now I'm trying to be a bit more specific to the underlying uh, commercial banking requirements. Based on certain research, we figured out that the SMEs are 67% of the SMEs are using these fintech partners. And then there is a big market of $370 billion for uh, uh, in this particular space. But if you interview these SMEs, you will find that only 18% of them say that their banks are essentially helping them out, which means that there is a big potential for banks to target the SME segment, which has been traditionally sort of overlooked. So moving forward, from our perspective, how can a bank really make a change, right? You've got the best technology available. You've got the best best scalability available. You've got the best platforms available. But what's missing is really being there where your customer wants you. And I think that's one of the key things that banks really have to now think from that angle. For example, we were, you know, one of the research elements from Revolut is that a typical business owner would really want to be where, uh, you know, branch proximity is not an issue. He is completely online. So look, if you look at it, branches are drastically going out of the business, right? And the definition of a bank as a, as a premise, as a building, has literally disappeared now. Another good persona is, for example, another native business owner, right? If you understand the persona of this particular sort of an SME, you would find one of the most important aspects for why uh, you know, uh, she would perhaps like to choose a particular bank is entirely based on the user experience. So this essentially tells you what is your end consumer's thinking. And this is what we call it as an outside in approach. And I think this is the mindset that banks have to literally take it. So moving forward, it's all about increasing engagement whether it is for your large corporate organizations or for your SME, build, SME organizations or for your mid-sized enterprise commercial organizations. You really have to delight their customers with instant gratification. And this is potentially uh, one of the ways to do that is to doing having a platform in your digital strategy. Moving forward, you would find, how do you delight the customer, right? Delighting the customer essentially means that you have certain use cases in your mobile app that will help them running their lives better. For example, an SME just wants to manage the business on the go. You know, This SME would essentially want the cash flow to be there, to know how the business is doing in near future. If there is an overdraft predicted, except expected, how can he or she instantly resolve that problem? So that's one of the use case, for example, you have to create value from a platform perspective. The other use case is also one of the pain areas we've seen in a lot of banks is from a onboarding perspective, right? Uh, literally, it takes days, if not months, to onboard a, an SME business owner or a large or a small uh, enterprise uh, customer. I think that's one area where 
uh, we as Backbase and, uh, you know, uh, we're really creating a lot of value. But this is not only marketing. Let's have a look at some of the real case studies that we've done. So Royal Bank of Canada, uh, this is uh, one of the top largest banks in the world. Uh, and, you know, we take pride in saying that we work very closely with Royal Bank of Canada. And when they chose us, they said, listen, we've got a problem. And, you know, it takes a hell of a lot of time to onboard a new uh, corporate organization, whether it is of any size, you know. And that's where we do value mapping. So we get into the processes and we see where is the break, right? And the angle we sort of implement this approach is from an outside-in approach rather than an inside-out approach. Usually what we've seen is that banks tend to fail in this pursuit of uh, seamless, frictionless onboarding is because they still are taking a siloed approach. So our advocacy has always been that you take an outside-in approach, which is you see from an eyes of the customer. So one of the key you know, facts here uh, from RBC perspective, 50% increase in the digital adoption, the bank is an award winner, and there's much more, uh, you know, RBC is doing a great job uh, with when it comes to customer experience. The other nice example is a bank in Germany called Panfrit Bank. Uh, Panfrit Bank is an, a very interesting case because what we've done in there, in this particular scenario, is we've digitized a very complex journey of, home loan and real estate origination, right? Real estate origination and home loans are very complex deal. You have got these different uh, players, you've got lawyers, you've got, you know, corporate organizations. And when these, when these large real estate transactions are being done, it becomes a bit of a mess, right? So with the help of our digital sales platform, we've literally streamlined that process. And now the deal execution is literally two times as faster as what they were before. So this is a really great example. I think they are uh, doing a great job in terms of adopting the platform and it has not only approved the lives of their customers, but also a great deal in, in their own lives as a bank, right? So everything is close to straight through processing. And uh, uh, this is one of the great examples I thought you know we should definitely share. Uh, so a bit about Backbase. Now I've talked about the industry, the challenges, and what the platform is doing. Uh, from you know, our vision is essentially four pillars. Uh, uh, delighting customers is one of the key pillars, which we see is the most important aspects. But we've also seen that uh, you know the employees of the banks are sort of overlooked, and there's no fusion between what the customers are expecting and what your bank employees are expecting. So we have we believe that this has to be synced. And then orchestrating value. Orchestrating value could be from the underlying systems, the large data that bank has from you know within the bank, or also from the outside world through fintech partnerships, by leveraging open APIs, by leveraging open banking uh, frameworks. And last but not the least is Agmus, as you can digitize your operations. Uh, with this note, uh, Backbase, if you uh, if, if moving forward, is uh, offering a turnkey transaction banking solution, uh, which caters to the entire gambit of uh, different personas, and uh, we uh, are, you know, uh, are very committed to make this change happen. And uh, I think uh, uh, we would love to. If there are any questions, I'd be uh, very keen to take them forward. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sakib. So we'll now move to Rajamaya. Welcome to the webinar. It will take us through the Infosys perspective on the transaction banking. Raja, over to you. Thanks, thanks, Chetan. Uh, thanks, Sakib, for setting the context. Uh, uh, from uh, Finacle and Infosys side, we would like to provide you some uh, trends that we're observing in the market, and as well as take you through some of the case studies where banks are trying to now reimagine the way they do the digital transaction banking. Uh, moving on, I just like to give you a, a perspective in terms of what has happened uh, because of COVID. And of course, pre-COVID itself, corporates, corporate banks and corporate banking, they had their own challenges in terms of growing the business, improving the revenue streams, and more importantly, to stay afloat and at the same time to be more profitable. But what has happened post-COVID, I think it is only the problems have got only accentuated. 
So we are going to witness the decline in the revenue growth rate anywhere between 5% to 5.2% globally because of the, uh, the slowdown in the economy. And this is going to impact the corporate banks themselves by anywhere between 5 to 20% decline in the revenues what we are looking at. And this obviously necessitates banks to be relevant, the, especially the corporate banks, and they need to look out for new sources of income. Secondly, what we've also seen is this already before COVID, uh, because of the negative interest regime and things like that, the banking profitability has been uh, reducing. If you now look at globally, the universal banks out of their balance sheet and P&L, almost 60% of the revenues come from the corporate side of the business and less than 30% of the business comes from the retail side of the business. And many of those uh, universal banks are getting hit because of the COVID. And you don't have any avenues to increase the, the profitability from the retail side. And obviously it brings the more burden and pressure on the corporate and wholesale banking to look at how to improve the business. And this necessitates these corporate banks to look at reimagining the new business model. And the third one is we have also seen pre-COVID, many of the larger banks, especially in the corporate area, they had plans of around anywhere between three to five years to digitally transform their corporate banking or digitize it. But the COVID has necessitated that this digital transformation has to be only accelerated. What used to take three years, five years plans, no, it has to take less than 12 months and it has to be in one quarter, two quarter, three quarter kind of a plan. So this digital uh, first approach requires the banks to reimagine the customer journeys, especially onboarding part and how do they sell because you don't have the, the luxury of sending the relationship manager to the customer sites. And more importantly, how do you engage with them on a digital way and how do you service on an ongoing basis? So moving forward, in this journey, what we have seen is one of the important element that banks have to know, look at is only way they can unlock opportunities is to look at uh, a comprehensive front end to back end digitization and also embracing a comprehensive platform business model. So if you now look at traditionally, the banks have been doing their business on the left hand side of the slide that you people see, which is basically serving the customers having banks own channels, whether it is a traditional relationship manager by based or account manager based or it's branch oriented or in some cases the some of the banks have extended online mobile banking capabilities but at the same time the products that they offered largely were restricted to what the self-created product of the bank the bank manufactured this product and they used to sell it to their customers through the own channel and similarly in some cases some of the progressive looking banks have tried to complement some of the partner products along with them and in some cases they went one step ahead to try to create a joint product propositions but what is required post covid is Basically, the banks have to look at having a comprehensive financial services marketplace. And this is going to help them in terms of how to reimagine the new business models and unlock the opportunities. And this requires looking at beyond the traditional channels into a, a comprehensive application programming interfaces or APIs led distribution. And this also requires for them to now closely integrate in a very online real time basis to the, the ERP systems or MRP systems of the corporates, because this is where you require that kind of an automation coming into picture. And more importantly, they have to now look at bringing in the ecosystem play together with partners and uh, embedded uh, the financing, the fintech partners. And all of them requires to be integrated through open APIs. And as Chetan mentioned, many of the GCC countries have already started opening up uh, the regulators, opening up the regulations on open banking. And this facilitates these banks in the back end to look beyond their self-created products into a bundled non-financial products. So banks will not be just limited to offering financial products. They should be able to look beyond that. And more importantly, we have seen a, a way away from offering your own products to look at offering the competing com companies or competing banks products also. And this is going to be a very, very important journey when it comes to moving towards a, a financial services marketplace. That is where the banks have to know comprehensively look at reimagining it. And this requires for bank to look at reimagining. It doesn't happen just like that. They have to comprehensively relook at their core uh, engines. So they have to first and foremost look at digitizing their core. They have to now look at in terms of API, API the comprehensive microservices and API driven corporate connectivity. Because at the end of the day, 
the world, the largest employer in the world is the inefficiency. So how do you know remove those inefficiencies is only by automating it. And as we see more and more powers are moving towards the end customers and consumers. And this is one of the important thing to have the APS to connect to end parties. And third one is in terms of redesigning the channel experiences from an engagement perspective. And they also have to know, look at empowering the relationship managers with the digital tools. It is no more going to be a face-to-face -face or a, a, a person-to-person conversation. And more importantly, the banks have to look at using the comprehensive data that they have built on the corporates and generate insights so that they should be able to know, offer tailored products to them. And of course, a platform business requires them to move towards uh, the ecosystem business. Moving forward, if you now look at this is where the pinnacle comes into picture in terms of having the experience of working in more than 100 countries and having more than 500 installations. And this is where a comprehensive set of solutions from back to front into a digitized product offering comes into picture in the form of corporate loans, the corporate deposits, and corporate liquidity management and supply chain trade financing and corporate payments and as well as corporate digital uh, suit so that you should be able to now engage with your end consumers on a real time basis. So moving forward, in this journey, what I want to highlight is in terms of providing you some use cases of how global corporate banks and wholesale banks have digitized their transaction banking and how they are now uh, yielding the results and as well as enjoying the benefits of it and passing on some of those benefits and experiences to their end corporates. So I have around six use cases or five use cases to be precise to talk about. Now, how a bank like they move from an end-to-end -end digital transformation and it's a global bank and i'm also going to talk about uh, specifically and a component based uh, a modular progressive modernization how a bank in europe looked at digital cash management and how another bank looked at digital corporate connections so that you don't have in between manual uploads and downloads you try to connect to the erp systems in the back end so that you have a lot more online real time uh, uh, automated environment and also going to cover some of the digital experiences how it has been extended to the corporates on the one side and as well as the relationship managers on the other side and lastly i want to talk about how using a technology like a distributed ledger technology or blockchain how uh, the comprehensive disruption has taken place in the digital supply chain financing so moving forward let me now cover the first use case which is basically going to be talking about a uh, front to uh, uh, the, the back a uh, complete uh, the transformation that a global tier one bank uh, based sort of uh, us is looking at and this is a, a, a legacy replacement that is taking place because this bank has realized that uh, the retail environment has been completely disrupted by the fintechs and they don't want that to happen to their corporate business and corporate side of the banking book so they want to now look at in terms of how to protect this and as well as bring entry barriers for some of those startups or fintechs who are looking at to getting into corporate banking and with that kind of an uh, mindset this bank went ahead and looked at completely transforming the way the bank has been doing the business and it's a multi-country a 30 country uh, implementation program covering across APAC, uh, Europe and LATAM. So what they want to know address through this is to remove all the bottlenecks that were there in terms of cust customer connectivity, take out the legacy at uh, the environment that they have and bring down the TCO because the corporate banks, as we mentioned earlier, they have to know reimagine in terms of how to improve the profitability and also as improve the uh, revenue on the lines of revenue and also look at in terms of bringing in a high a rate STP because you have to have an automation so that the customer feels the benefit and, and digitized process will bring them back for more and more businesses. So in this journey, what you looked at is uh, the bank is not only trying to offer a comprehensive uh, end customer experience with a truly digital platform, and as well as they are providing a seamless multi-country operations with reduced TCO so that a corporate which has multi-country presence, quite often uh, the banks and as well as the vendors forget that uh, the every corporate will have multi-country presence or multi-country operations and how do you know bring all of them joined together and provide a near real time view of their balances and liquidity management on an ongoing basis and as well as bring in a lot of agility so that the bank should be able to take up uh, whatever development and enhancement that happens in the back end through a, a comprehensive DevOps and, and uh, agile way of integrating that and passing on that benefit to the end customer. So this is what we have seen in this uh, bank. 
and they are now looking at breaking it to uh, multi countries they've already gone live in one of the southeast asian country so they are now taking it uh, to other countries and specifically looking at implementing and benefiting the the real real time uh, payments expectations of many of the countries and offering those services to the banks moving on the next use case that i wanted to talk about is around the the bank in uh, uk which is the santander bank uh, from spain so when the open banking initiatives are taking place in uk way back around 3 3 and a half years back this bank uh, reimagined uh, the way the corporate banking has to be done on the lines of open banking so they wanted to now bring in a comprehensive real time cash management suite to the uh, end customers uh, of uh, uk so that they the end corporate customers may be having multiple bank relationships how do you combine all of them and provide a liquidity structure and help them build their own hierarchies and provide them a view about the consolidated cash positions in a digital way uh, on the on the move so that they should be able to know look at uh, uh, how are the positions moving how are the liquidity uh, taking place and how is the 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 funding needs to be taking place all of that is a, a winning market proposition that bank this bank has taken to the corporates and they are now taking it to the next level by bringing many other countries into this not just the multi bank environment in uk but many other countries uh, where the corporate customers have multi country presence and they want to bring it and provide a near real time view i think this is way it is going to change the way the digitizing the the entire cash management operations uh, from a open banking perspective so moving on uh, the third use case that i wanted to talk about is a large banking group in uh, australia new zealand region uh, which wanted to uh, digitize the entire banking propositions from the perspective of uh, the beginning of the customer onboarding going up to the back end processing so that they would like to have an end to end automated uh, digitized corporate banking experience so this intention was to replace their uh, uh, three legacy environments that they have and they want to also now take it to the larger customer base uh, and expand it as you as you are aware uh, anz as a market you have a limited uh, way of expanding the customer base unless in many other countries in asia the saturated banking population so you have to now look at taking the the competitive banks customers into your side by offering much more innovative products and creative way of doing it uh, this operation is for uh, new zealand and they are now trying to address the the product silos that they have in their environment disjointed customer experiences that they were uh, providing earlier and uh, because of which they had lot of dissatisfied customers moving out of their uh, uh, banking environment and as well as in terms of there is no scope for reimagining the business uh, as well as in terms of offering creative and innovative product so this is where uh, the the pinnacle came into picture so this bank is now looking at creating a frictionless experience between the corporate customers and their systems and into the onboarding in a digital way and processing and servicing them in a much more much faster much transparent and much uh, easier way so this is going to be a implementing the entire the pinnacle digital engagement suite so that it provides the digital experiences to the customers and provides omni channel view in the middle and more importantly links to the back end business engines in a real time basis so that bank should be able to leverage all the api uh, that they wanted to use and expose it to the end consumers and as well as the fintech and the ecosystem so that they should be able to now move on with the business in a much better way moving on the fourth use case that i wanted to talk about is around uh, the the bank of the west in uh, us so this is the bnp paribas held bank in uh, in the us uh, west coast and this bank was looking at in terms of uh, uh, targeting the corporate customers and uh, uh, bringing the more and more customers into their uh, uh, businesses they have presence and offices in almost more than 23 states uh, uh, in uh, uh, in the in the us and they have a, a, a business strategy Uh, in terms of the priorities where they want to know uh, put together a comprehensive flagship initiative for the commercial banking group which is called as uh, grow west so grow west has uh, an idea of transforming its cash management businesses for small businesses and as well as in terms of the corporates so the bank want to be in the forefront of the innovation in commercial banking and uh, as well as they have got a mandate 
to look at uh, from the parent bank to offer uh, cash management services uh, uh, not just in the in the west coast but extending it to the entire north america so this is what the bank's uh, idea and strategic initiative is so what they have done is this is the first bank in the us which has leveraged pinnacle to offer rtp as you are aware the us has launched the real time payments capabilities in in country so uh, this bank has partnered with another partner bank and and offered this on a real time basis and this is also looking out for bringing in a comprehensive uh, uh, intuitive way of engaging with the end corporate customers so this is where the clinical digital engagement hub and the and the enterprise class systems are coming into picture so it is not just the bank is offering the cash management but also trying to bring in uh, integration with more than 40 systems that the bank has and more than 160 digital services have been extended and apart from that bank has also for the first time has given access to the corporate customers in, in terms of empowering them in that journey they have also created more than 200 alerts so that the corporate customers will know where what is happening in their accounts instead of trying to log in every time so it is the banking on the go is coming into picture so this is where the uh, uh, the entire uh, business proposition is coming into picture and uh, the enterprise payments also, as I mentioned, uh, helping the bank to look at the RTP uh, business, uh, the real time business also being garnered into it. So this includes payables management uh, on the go. It includes uh, the account reconciliation services, uh, reconciling uh, multiple uh, currency management services and, and offering to corporate customers a digitized zero balance and target balance accounts on the go. Moving on to the next use case that I wanted to talk about is a, a bank in Europe, uh, which was looking at a comprehensive unified platform uh, for them to now launch new corporate uh, services on a completely end-to-end -end digitized way. And this is the Swed Bank uh, in uh, Sweden. So this bank has gone ahead uh, and implemented a Pinnacle from, for the Nordic countries, and they want to build a futuristic proposition with the digital advisory services, which not many banks in the world can claim up, and as well as making sure that they are going to use the latest payment system uh, from Pinnacle, which is going to be providing them access to service, the ISO 222 based capabilities and ISO 222 based are compliant cash management services. So with this, what the bank has done is they have now looking at targeting the, the Nordic region corporate customers and they're also looking at in terms of using the Finacle from a flexibility perspective and they want to launch a lot more products in terms of from the perspective of not limiting to only cash management innovatively offering the, the target balancing the pooling and the sweeping kind of capabilities and also in terms of bringing in the, the payments capabilities uh, so that uh, the bank should be able to now scale their operations as and when many of the other European countries start opening uh, similar to the PSD2 or open banking capabilities. And uh, ISO 222 has provided a much required capability for this bank to look at go beyond what they're looking at from a perspective of uh, a traditional uh, corporate banking capabilities. Uh, moving on, the last case that I wanted to talk about is around how banks should be able to now look at latest technologies uh, in digitizing the corporate uh, and the, tra the, the transaction banking. And this is where I wanted to talk about a consortium of banks in India coming together to launch a, a comprehensive digitized end-to-end -end trade finance supply chain financing on blockchain technology. And these banks have all not only brought in other banks together, but extended this network to bring in more and more corporates, logistic companies, insurance companies, the payment systems, the aggregators, so that everybody has a one single view, a transparent view. The transactions have become much faster, smoother, cheaper, and you would avoid all the hops and it has become a lot more secure and safer. So that wherever in Indian context, wherever the banks were facing the fraud of financing multiple invoices or same invoices multiple times. So this blockchain technology has reduced all of them to nil. And, and in the needs full scale, they are going to serve almost 86% of the Indian trade business on that network. And in the beginning itself, it has reduced, uh, for example, a letter of credit uh, launch time by almost 75%. So this is how you see the, the banking from a corporate perspective moving towards digital. So moving on, I also wanted to help tell you in terms of in terms of how the market benchmarking is looking like. 
and independent assessments have spoken about uh, both in the in the form of a, a, a digital banking platform and as well as in the corporate banking platform area so with that um, i thank the opportunity given thank the sida for giving me the opportunity and we are open for any questions or any clarifications thank you maya thank you so much uh, very very interesting use cases uh, came across i think i'll uh, now keep 10 minutes for question and answers and i'll just take the first question i think the question maya i think is for you uh, given that you started it all with an e banking platform many years back uh, to a full fledged transaction banking platform how do you see uh, implementation complexities and delivery complexities of delivering this platform and how do you compete uh, with fintechs during your delivery very good question chetan i think uh, your observation is right uh, it is not so easy from moving from one uh, solution or a component to a comprehensive solution implementation and this is where uh, the technology has also helped us over a period of time so as you are aware uh, the the cloud technologies the composable architecture based banking apis coming into picture and more importantly if you now look at in terms of banks own adoption of technology has changed gone are those days where banks are looking at uh, rip and replace all their systems uh, over the weekend in terms of number of banks number of branches customers and channels i think banks have also realized it's always better to look at a progressive modernization a component based component approach a modular implementation and with the apis coming into pictures you don't lose out on the on the features and functionality so this has really helped us out in terms of taking the journeys of larger banks a uh, global multinational banks from front to back end implementations and the delivery timelines also have come down so just to give you a perspective uh, chetan if you now look at uh, the largest amalgamations that have happened in anywhere in the world is in india so as you are aware uh, the government of india and the the finance ministry announced that all the 10 large banks the public held, publicly listed and government held banks have to be merged into three banks so it brought in three three banks together and each one of have minimum around 40 million customers 50 million customers so you don't see this kind of huge uh, customer base and branch based uh, uh, amalgamations taking place and to add to that the entire thing happened during pandemic so people cannot actually visit branches there's a lockdown expectation there are issues around uh, uh, the the social distancing and things like that the whole programs were delivered virtually and uh, the the experience that we have gained over a period of time has helped us to deliver this kind of programs the complex programs uh, the first amalgamation happened in 12 months the second amalgamation was much much further uh, enhanced to be done in 9 months this is completely front to end amalgamation so with the least disruption to the customers at the least disruption to the staff inside the inside the bank so that is how we have evolved over a period of time to take care of the delivery complexities and as well as expectations from the customers chetan i'll pause here sure second question i think very interesting question uh, sakib for you is on given that you spoke about the customer experience how do you see the sme customer experience different from the corporate corporate customer segment from a technology and a product standpoint fantastic question thank you indeed chetan and i think uh, this all boils down to the view you know it all boils down to having a a perspective from an outside in view and uh, i personally believe that technology is available ref, li, uh, right and left right however it is how you implement it that is what is the most important aspect uh so if you look at the you know the typical personas for a large organization and let's say for an sme organization you would find that there is definitely a lot of overlap but then there are some of the some of the let's say the requirements which are very specific to large corporate organizations right so from a product standpoint of view i think uh, and if i look at from a let's say uh, if a bank is evaluating their products it's very important to see which is the best of the breed okay and in a, essentially partner to that particular uh, product company because for example if 
let's take a backpace perspective here if backpace understands the space of commercial banking really well then it is it is very let's say uh, it, it is quite natural that we will have a really nice product fit for the sme banking uh, problems so i think uh, to keep it a bit short it is more to do with uh, with having an outside in approach really understanding the underlying needs really understanding and thinking beyond banking you know and and i think now the lines between banking and other fintechs is very blurred uh, so i think that's where uh, ecosystem play comes into uh, uh, into the equation and that's where how technology and products can really help in differentiating between sme needs and corporate needs very interesting i'll move uh, to the next question from sanjay sethi and it's again a question raja for you uh, just as the banks are expected to collaborate do you see platform providers collaborating between cash management and trade platforms for inter platform dependencies so that's a first question and there is a second question as well uh, the finical trade connect which you spoke about does that work for international banks and international trade or it's just a local blockchain platform within india thanks chetan thanks sanjay for the interesting questions so your first observation in terms of is the uh, entire collaboration is only for banks or is for the vendor also so it's absolutely across the globe for respective of whether you are from vendor community or from a, a banking community it applies to all of us because collaboration is the way forward as we see and in this direction we have collaborated with the many uh, uh, leading starting from the hyperscalers going up to the fintechs you have the wide range of people who we collaborate with and some of them are actually competing in the spaces where we offer our uh, products also and services so it is not just limited to one vendor and no vendor can in isolation win or offer a comprehensive solution to what the market is demanding so it is relevant to vendors and we have been doing that we have been front ending it uh, for a long time now Uh, your second question is in terms of the technical trade connect uh, that solution is actually a global solution it is not restricted to a region or not restricted to your country international trade transaction also be carried out and uh, if the banks want to now extend it the network to the the players outside their country outside the region and bring them on board absolutely possible in fact one of our customers uh, have launched this trade and uh, trade as a service using this blockchain services across 14 countries so that whichever uh, bank wants to offer or do a tra trade transactions across multiple countries this bank enables them in terms of doing that so to repeat uh, it is not just uh, restricted to one country the solution is global it can be implemented across multiple countries and across multiple uh, banks in uh, these countries very interesting raja so next question uh, i will take which is a very interesting question from tejas how do you see time to market reduction uh, with respect to different product variants thanks to the transaction banking platform current accounts offer on deposit quick scoring for onboarding and working capital financing so time to market has uh, significantly collapsed tejas a uh, great question uh, earlier platforms used to be or an e banking program even used to be 9 to 12 month kind of a program thanks to agile delivery model with which transaction platforms gets deployed first platforms are available on cloud so if your regulator is allowing that significantly reduces the time to market and uh, as far as organization is clear on an sme or a corporate what is the product portfolio needs to be offered a first set of product can go live within 6 months and then every quarter couple of products so very much or uh, i would say 50 to 60% reduction to the time to market which we see in our implementation programs uh, uh last two questions i think the one question is from kalix and a very interesting question again uh raja if you want to answer this how do you manage the resistance by some government and regulatory authorities for blockchain technology uh knowing the capabilities it can offer to the financial services industry and what it can bring around for a cash management from digitization very interesting question um, if you now look at around 3 years back uh, most of the regulatory bodies and the central banks were uh, having some amount of apprehension around uh, the 
whole aspect of distributed ledger technology. But their apprehensions was largely for the cryptocurrencies that were being traded on top of it, not the underlying technology. So we have seen progress in central banks and regulators always been promoting usage of the distributed ledger technology. And they were always trying to uh, put question marks on the cryptocurrencies. So the solutions that we have seen globally that have been built using the distributed ledger technology, whether it is on blockchain, Hyperledger, Ethereum, Corda, all of them are nothing to do with the cryptocurrency. It is basically working on a fiat currency and it helps in terms of banks to offer and probably digitize the entire transaction sets, whether it is in the area of customer, uh, uh, know your customer policies, customer onboarding, then moving on to the payments and remittances, or moving on to the supply chain financing, and specifically looking at the trade finance, all of that is possible. And cash management is very, very possible in the digitized environment so that the bank should be able to now provide a near real time capabilities across multiple countries using blockchain technologies. So blockchain technology has a huge potential in terms of uh, helping banks reimagine the business model, creating a network effect, and more importantly, making sure that the costs are reduced, transparency is increased, security and safety of the, the entire information and the confidentiality is also increased. And that is where we see regulators like Monetary Authority of Singapore, Hong Kong Monetary Authority, Reserve Bank of India, Bank of England, all of them are trying to now promote blockchain as a technology to reduce fraud, increase transparency, and more importantly, digitize the whole transaction so that the fraudulent transactions can come down drastically. Very interesting, Raja. I'll just take the last question. We're sorry, we're out of time now, but uh, this is for Saki View. Which innovation strategy should the bank put in place to be able to compete favorably with the fintechs? Fantastic. I think this is one of my favorite questions, you know, and uh, this is where uh, I believe the concept of having an agile uh, way of working really adds a lot of value. Uh, you know, uh, I, I believe fintechs should be seen as partners, you know, uh, and we should all realize that we all have a play in this world and we cannot do everything. So if you see fintechs as your partners, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the sum is bigger for all of us. Uh, so collaboration, having an agile mindset, working in small, you know, wins, and then, you know, I might sound like a record, uh, a broken record here, but Rome was never built in a day, you know. And I think with fintech partnerships, uh, that's where you can take it together jointly. Thanks, Sakib. Thanks, Raja. I think it's a great insights, and I'm sure people enjoyed uh, last 65 minutes. Uh, really appreciate your time and insights. Anybody has any specific questions? Feel free to come back to any one of us, and we're more than happy to help you guys. Mm -hmm.